grace, peace, and mercy be multiplied to you from God our Father, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our meditation this day is the epistle lesson from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, the 8th chapter, the 28th to the 39th verse. In the name of Jesus, dear fellow redeemed. Families are important to us. When they function as they should, they are really the first experiences that we have with people who truly love us. It's usually in a family that we find the strength and the wisdom to cope with the many difficulties of our life. A real fear for us can be somehow losing our family connection and becoming isolated or alone. God has a family. That's really what our text is about. He has formed his family through his love shown to us in Jesus Christ. God the Holy Spirit brings us into this family by means of the gift of faith. Many of us were brought into God's family as infants through holy baptism, and there we receive the gift of faith. Others came to faith later through hearing the word of God's promise in Jesus Christ, and then being baptized into that fellowship of God's family. In either case, it is the Lord God who creates and sustains his family, the holy Christian church, even through the difficulties of this life, that family is where we are to come to receive his strength, his comfort, his forgiveness. His intention is that by this family, by means of his love and forgiveness, this family will remain together for all eternity. It's not a short-term thing. In his word, he reassures us that we need never lose our family connection with him. And his love, no matter what the difficulties we face in this world. We find reassurance in the inspired, inspired words of St. Paul in our text from Romans 8. It is our Lord God who says to his Christian believers of the first century and of the 21st century, despite what, this, where, what you may go through as my children, you cannot change my love for you. He sets before us a promise that those whom he has called according to his gracious purpose and who therefore have come to love him, will have all things work together for their ultimate good. Consider the fact that the God who loved us, who loved us so much that he was willing to sacrifice his only son for the forgiveness of our sins, that that God is the same God who plans our future and is with us in that future. Although God has shown us his great love, and we believe that's true, we still sometimes have difficulty yielding to his wisdom and in giving him the direction of our lives. He's promised that he would work all things for our good. How does that work? Part of our sinful pride is that we would like God to do what we think is best for us. We would like to define for the Lord how we think all things working together for good should go. But the only way that things really work together for good is that they lead us to God's purpose to which we have been called. Good things which lead us away from that purpose are not really good things at all, although we might like them. 
But what is his purpose? Again, the text says, those he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus. You and I are not like Jesus. How so? Well, we have a sinful nature. Jesus did not. Jesus was wholly concerned with obeying his heavenly Father. We sometimes aren't. Jesus, as the Son of God, was entirely holy. Even though God makes us holy, we are not of ourselves holy. Jesus is the the holy Son of God, but we by nature sinners run from God because we really don't want to face the consequences of our sin against him. But God wants us to be like Jesus. And so God makes us holy by calling us to repent and then forgiving us by transferring our guilt to Jesus. The text before us says that we were predestined to be called to faith in Jesus. And having been brought to faith in Jesus, God says, you're justified. That is, you are declared to be righteous like Jesus because of Jesus' sacrifice. Now we have the glory of being in God's family as his adopted sons and daughters sharing in this family of God with our brother Jesus, sharing his image as one of God's own, as one of God's children. The good to which God works all things for us is really to retain us by faith in the place of God's earthly family, first of all, That is the church. Until, of course, we can join the heavenly family and share the glory of eternal life with Jesus forevermore. It's true that the God who is for us has overruled anyone or anything that would rise to condemn us. God is the one who has justified us on the basis of Jesus' death in payment for our sins. Jesus' resurrection from the dead secures for us an eternal life of glory with him. Despite our continuing struggle with our own sins, Jesus continues to intercede for us that we might repent and continue to be forgiven and maintained in the family that we too might continue to have a place with him in the family of God. The only problem in this gracious future that he has planned for us is the possibility of being separated from God's love and losing our place in God's family. Now how could such a thing happen How is it possible? Well, there's the danger of losing all that we have been given by failing to endure. Enduring what? Enduring the opposition that's bound to come our way. Of those who would talk us out of the family membership, who would say to us, well, (laughs) your religion is really nothing. God doesn't exist. Or who would say to us, uh, you're not any better than anybody else. So what's this religion of yours? The bad news also is that the forces of Satan are very powerful and never give up on trying to separate us from God and his family. We know that these hellish forces make things difficult for God's people. They always have. Quoted in our text for today is Psalm 44 that tells the sad story of what may happen to God's people even though they are still within the family. The Old Testament of people of God lamented 
speaking to the Lord. For your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. We are tempted to say, we face no such danger in our time and our nation. No one's going to kill us for being a Christian. But even though we have freedom of religion guaranteed in our country, the persecution of Christians is something that is worldwide very, very, very prominent. Even in our own America, the pressure is rising for God's family members to conform. To conform to the sinful worldly standards that would cause us to stand apart from the family of God. We do face the possibility of the loss of some things. Perhaps wealth. We could be fined for not conforming. Or simply freedom. The freedom to gather as God's people. Or the freedom to speak God's truth without being canceled. And yes, yes, even our lives could be at stake. But to us who know Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and through him our eternal God and Father, his love and care for us has no end. Through the Holy Spirit who proceeds from the Father and the Son, we are equipped to face whatever may come. We're equipped with what? Equipped with God's word. And with his sacraments. Our baptism by which he claimed us. The absolution by which we can bring our sins to God and be forgiven. And his supper by which Jesus himself lives in us. These things, therefore, his word and his sacraments enable us to stand in faith even against opposition until our life on earth is complete and we pass into the heavenly realm. Through all manner of evil may come. We have the promise that our Lord will conquer that we will conquer with him overwhelmingly through the one who continues to love us. We can join St. Paul in the certainty that nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God that we have in Christ. Not death, not anything in life, not the supernatural creatures or rulers with great power, not the distance across the known universe or anything else by evil activity can force us away from God and out of the family of God. The God who continues to love us in Jesus Christ. God has not given us knowledge of the future evils that may come. But of course, our greatest danger is not them. It's not from them. Our greatest danger is that we depart from the family of Christian believers and, and the faith in Christ, the Christ who keeps us eternally safe in his church, his family. For we will be guarded by his Holy Spirit who equips us with God's word and his sacraments. Families are important to us. God's family, which shares his love and forgiveness, is the most important family of all. We are secure in his promises. Not anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. In his name, amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.